Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Why is Darwin Nunez perfect for Manchester United? He's a player that everyone seems to be talking about, but why is it he would be perfect for United? So we're going to look at what he actually is good at, what he's weak at, and how he would work at Manchester United. Because I think there are aspects to his game that people maybe aren't thinking about, and I think he would be perfect for what Manchester United need. But obviously, we spoke about this last night, uh, Darwin Nunez, Manchester United and Newcastle are bidding for Darwin Nunez and are currently the team's closest to signing him. And this is coming in from a Uruguayan journalist who was actually very correct in relation to our links to Palestri all that time ago. So what is, what is it that uh, Darwin Nunez is all about? And I think one of the first things I want to talk about is in relation to what, where I think he would play for Manchester United. And I think if we go to this screen, you will see... Look, this is not the team I think we'll be playing next year. I've only put De Jong in it uh, in the midfield with Fred. We've still got Maguire there. We've still got Shaw. We've still got Delo. He's still English. Um, we've got Sancho off the right, Ronaldo through the middle. But one thing that maybe people don't realise about Darwin Nunez is that he can play from the left. Uh, he can play in a front two. He can play as a one. And I think that Ronaldo is not going to play every game. So Darwin Nunez can certainly play in that position. But he can also play from the left. And the reason he can do that is because he's a very direct player. His link-up play and his passer and his hold-up play is considered to be his weakness. I don't think it's as weak as some people say, and we'll compare him to Richarlison and Kane in a minute on that. But what he really is very good at, when I think about Darwin Nunez, when I think about... No, I'm not going to do that. When I think about Darwin Nunez, I think he's strong. I think he's tall. I think he's ridiculously fast. And I think he likes to dribble and carry the ball, which is shown in his stats. If you, if you look at uh, Darwin Nunez dribble stats compared to Harry Kane and Richarlison and his progressive runs and a progressive run well a dribble is very obvious a progressive run is when you get the ball and carry the ball uh, and in the final third a progressive run is if you carry the ball more than 10 meters so progressive runs per 90 Darwin Nunez is averaging just under three per 90 and 5.8 dribbles per 90 Richarlison 1.5 progressive runs per 90 and yet Darwin Nunez is three Harry Kane is 1.2 progressive runs per 90 and Darwin Nunez is 3. Harry Kane dribbles 3.5, 4.8 for Richarlison and 5.8 for Darwin Nunez. So he is a player that you could play to that left-hand side. He's very, very fast. He's very, very strong. And he also likes to carry the ball. So there's absolutely no reason Darwin Nunez couldn't play there. And what Darwin Nunez really likes to do is cut in on his right-hand side and shoot. So basically, you could play Darwin Nunez as an inverted left striker. You could have a situation where he could play with Ronaldo to the left of the attack with Sancho off the right and Darwin Nunez basically playing like an inverted striker who can off the left-hand side who can get in. I mean, not dissimilarly to what Rashford does, but it's Darwin Nunez and it's not Marcus Rashford. And maybe that's, that, maybe that's a way that Ten Hag could, could incorporate them both into the system and I certainly think that that is an option and it's maybe something that people aren't aware of when I think about Darwin Nunez as well I think possibly one of his weaknesses is the ability to be caught offside now people will be saying Rashford again Rashford and Darwin Nunez are not similar they can play Darwin Nunez can play off the left but I think we all would accept that his best position is as a number nine and his game is a lot more than that I think he's a, I think he's a very good penalty box striker he, he certainly can get his head on things and he likes to run with the ball. But he also gives you that option, because he's tall and physical, to hit a long ball into him. But he also gives you that option to, lock, to knock a ball over the top because of his pace. And I think Manchester United, sometimes we have done that over the last few, few years. And Rashford, I suppose, has been a, uh, a symbol of that. But it's not a bad thing to have that option. It's not a bad thing to have that explosive pace. Because I think we saw under Ralph Rangnick that Rashford... They fell out. It was very obvious they fell out. But when I, when I go back to January and February, Rashford used to get picked a lot and the fans didn't agree with it. And, and, and it was very obvious that Rashford was being picked because of his pace, not because of his ability at that point. And then Ranić didn't want to pick him any more and he used a langer for his pace. So pace is a nice outlet for any manager, whether you're Pep, Klopp, Ranić, Eric Ten Hag, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Pace is a nice thing to have. It's just how much you use it. I think Ole was very dependent on that ball over the top. I think... Darwin Nunez does give us a little bit more pace in the final three, which we don't really have with Sancho and we don't really have with Ronaldo and we might not want to use it with Rashford. So Darwin Nunez can play off the left. 
I think ultimately we're probably going to look to use him more as a number nine when Ronaldo's not available to play and, and maybe, maybe, maybe Marcus Rashford would come to the left. I don't know. But we're talking about Nunez. And he has got the ability to occupy two strikers. Uh, I think he's a very, very clever player in his off the ball movement. And I think if you've got the right player in behind him, whether it's Bruno, Van der Beek, whether it's De Jong, whether it's Sancho, he is a player that makes a lot of runs. And he is a player that if we make if we make, if we play the right pass, he'll make the right run. And I think that is something about Darwin Nunez that look, we've looked at the left hand side first of all, and that's not a problem. But we are also looking for somebody that's a number nine. We're not looking for an inverted left hand side player that's going to cut in and, and and you know dribble and shoot. Um, we've we've seen that with Rashford. There's nothing wrong with that. I think inverted wingers are something that I was never a really big fan of. But I think in the evolution of the game. Having a wide player that can cut in and shoot, you've got more options if you're cutting in and shooting than you are with your left foot. So I wouldn't be opposed to using Darwin Nunez off the left. But as a striker, that's surely what we're looking to bring in. Somebody that can um, support Ronaldo when he's not playing and ultimately take be the heir to the throne of Ronaldo. And I think in Darwin Nunez, we've got somebody there who is prolific at scoring goals. And he, he's good in the air, but he's also got that not always um, hand-in-hand attributes of being big and fast. And he is big and fast. And he's 22. And he's got a lot of things in his locker. As I said, maybe people don't realise Darwin Nunez's ability to get the ball and run with it. Maybe they don't get their, maybe they don't realise his ability to run at a player. Maybe they don't realise about his movement in the box. And he does get highlighted for his link-up play and his passing, not being where it needs to be. And I think that's another thing where we could bring Ricarlison and uh, Harry Kane into it, to be fair. Because when I look at that, uh, forward passes per 90, Harry Kane's averaging 6.1. Richarlison's averaging 3.7 Darwin Nunez 2.7 so Harry Kane is up at 6 Richarlison's up at nearly 4 forward passes per 90 uh, and Nunez is at three under 3 so yes, his link up play needs work, there is no doubt about that he's, um, he's not making as many passes as Richarlison and Harry Kane but at 22 that's something you can certainly work on and, and I, don't, I don't see that as an issue and one of the things that you have to bear in mind is is his ability to defend from the front because that's something that with Ronaldo he's been criticised and Ronaldo will be our main striker next year but if Darwin Nunez is coming in to support Ronaldo and be the heir to that throne like I say what's the evolution beyond Ronaldo with Darwin Nunez? Is he a player that can press from the front? And actually yes he is. He completes more successful attacking options per 90 than Kane and Richarlison. Um, his offensive duels, in fact, are uh, 11.5 per 90, Harry Kane's 11.3. Um, defensive duels per 90, 3.1, 2.1 to Harry Kane. So he does put the defensive work in. He is an energetic striker. And I think this, for me, is why Darwin Nunez is a, a really desirable signing for Manchester United. Now, whether we are actually in for him, I think we are. But again, it comes down to how much does Eric Ten Hag want him? Because if Eric Ten Hag wants him, then I'm very excited about us actually getting hold of this player if we can do it. Because at 22, I think he's an un, he's an un, he's got untapped potential, and and I think where his weaknesses are, maybe wanders offside a little bit. Certainly, his link up play and his passing and hold up play can improve. I think Eric Ten Hag's the right man to do that. If you're buying a player at 22 and they need work on certain areas. I think most managers, certainly at Ten Hag, would say, I'm happy to help him improve his link-up play and his hold-up play if he's already good at finishing, he's already good at dribbling, he's already good at progressive runs, and he's already energetic, and he's good in the air, and he makes intelligent runs. Those are things that I need from a striker. I can work on his link-up play, I can work on his passing, but he has got, at 22, the core skills that you would want in a striker that... Obviously, he's three years off from 25. What we could do with him in that time, I think there's a striker there that could be one of the world's best strikers in three or four years' time. He might not be, but he could be. And I think that the reason I made this video, why Darwin Nunez to Manchester United, is because I'm not 100% sure, and I think it's, it's probably completely understandable that a lot of fans actually know what he's about. And as I said, if I was describing Darwin Nunez, I would say physical, fast, likes to run with the ball and a fantastic finisher. Where we need to work on, probably on those runs. Sometimes he mistimes them. You can work on that, but he's making the right runs. 
And yeah, link up play and passing, he can definitely improve. Statistically, we've, we, we know he can pass the ball better and more. Uh, and we could work on that. So I think it'd be a very exciting signing if we do it. And I think he, at, at, the, at the moment, he stands out as the the perfect number nine for Manchester United to replace Darwin Nunez available at the moment. And also, more interestingly, going back to this, he can play off the he can play off the left, and you can play Ronaldo. So you can actually play them in the same team if you want to. He can start games with Ronaldo, which isn't a front two, which is him off the left. You'd need Luke Shaw back to his best for that to happen because he would have to provide the overlap um, of, with when he's playing with an inverted uh, forward. But uh, it's definitely an option. Anyway, get your thoughts in. Smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe and give us your thoughts on Darwin Nunez.